OneNote is a versatile note-taking tool, and one thing it does better than most other apps, I think, is how easily it lets you capture information in any form. You can, of course, type into it, handwrite, draw, record audio, insert pictures, scan documents, and even clip web pages all into the same page. And this kind of multimodal capture means you can grab ideas however they come to you. Because OneNote can handle all these input types seamlessly, it becomes more than just a digital notebook. It really becomes your second brain. It becomes a place where every piece of information you capture and collect lives together and stays searchable and organized. In this video, we'll review a comprehensive list of all the ways you can capture content into OneNote, ranging from the most widely used to less common methods that you may not have considered. So let's get into it. The first and the most basic way to capture information into OneNote, obviously, is by typing into it. OneNote, after all, is a note-taking application. So if you're using a desktop computer or a laptop, you just open up a page and you start typing into it. And OneNote uses an infinite canvas, which means you can click anywhere on the page and start typing. Now, if you go to the top, we also have the option to draw. So you can choose any of the pen types and color and start drawing. If you have automatic shapes enabled, you can draw shapes like a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. It'll recognize and make it into a clean circle. And you can do this with triangle and rectangle basic shapes. Um, you can also choose their shapes command and insert things like an arrow into your canvas. And of course, if you're using something like an iPad or a Surface tablet, then you could handwrite directly using a pen. And when you do that, you can click on this text pen. When you use the stylus to write text, it'll automatically convert it into text for you. So this is the most basic way, typing, drawing, and handwriting into OneNote. The second basic way to capture information into OneNote is by copying and pasting text from other sources. So for example, I have this web page here on project management framework. I'm just going to copy this top section here, control C, and I will paste it right in. And you'll notice that much of the formatting is retained and it also provides the link to the actual article, which is helpful if you want to go back to the full article. So this is one way. However, if you don't want to carry over the formatting, you can use Control Shift V, which is copying the text only. That way you can apply your own formatting once it's pasted over into OneNote. So this is from a simple web page. Another thing that I do very often is when I get information from my ChatGPT or Gemini search and I want to take bring the content over into OneNote, what I'll do is I'll scroll down all the way down to the bottom of the conversation and hit copy. And I will paste it right into OneNote. And again, you'll notice that much of the formatting has been retained even down to the table. So I could see that this is a table. I'm going to select it. And if you want to confirm that this is a table, I'll go to the table and I can unhide borders. And you can see that the table structure has been maintained as well as all of the headings and the bullets. Same thing here. If you don't want to carry over the formatting, I can hit Control Shift and V, and it brings it into sort of like a, a markup file. Uh, I don't like it because it, you know, it's more difficult to get rid of the hashtags and the asterisk. So I like to bring the formatting over in this case. And lastly, you can even bring content in from, let's say, like YouTube. I can click the URL to the actual video and paste it in to OneNote and it becomes dynamic, right? I actually have a player right in OneNote built in. So I can click on play and it will play the video. Let's give it a second. I'll hit play. Quick little tips to get you some quick lit. And one other tip that I can offer you here is you don't have to always play the video from the beginning. So I am well into um, like eight minutes into the video, I can right mouse click in the video and hit copy video URL at current time. And when I do this and paste it over and hit play, 
Again, it's going to take a second for the video to load. But when I hit play, drop down, there is an option, clip. you can see that it's playing from that playhead. And this is helpful, especially for video tutorials. You know, I could sometimes copy a link to the video that's 20 minutes long, but I just want to find out how to do one specific thing. So then I will copy video URL from the playhead and then paste it into OneNote. And this becomes a very important sort of resource tool for me because then I can jump straight into the sections that I need to get to. So copying and pasting, even though it's a very basic function, I feel that it's very, very helpful and useful. I hope you're enjoying these tips so far. By the way, if you're looking to pick up a new skill this year, Skillshare is a great place to start. Their classes are taught by industry experts and broken into small bite-sized videos, making it easy to fit learning into your day. I realize there are plenty of resources like YouTube, but finding the right videos can be time consuming. And often videos aren't part of a structured sequence, so you have to figure out the learning path yourself. With Skillshare, you don't have to worry about that. The content is high quality, logically sequenced, and even includes learning paths that have multiple classes to help you master specific skills. I've just completed a short class on AI video creation. With the advancement of AI, it's now possible to bring my vision and ideas to life visually. The class that I just completed taught me all the components I need to consider in my prompts like the subject details, the scene, the lighting, angle, camera motion, all the things that I'd never considered before. In either case, whether it's AI video generation, photography, design, or productivity, Skillshare has something for everyone. If that sounds like what you've been looking for, check out the link in the description below. The first 500 people to use my link in the description or to scan the QR code will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare plus 20% off your first payment. So don't wait until the new year to start learning and get started today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Another easy way to capture information into OneNote is by using screen grab or screen clipping. So if you were to go to the insert tab and click on screen clipping, you'll get a little crosshair and you can grab anything that's on your computer screen. And what's nice is it adds it directly into your OneNote page and provides a timestamp. Another way to do this is using the Windows shortcut key, Windows Shift and S. That'll also bring your crosshair and you can grab your screen. In this case, it copies it into your clipboard. So you do have to manually paste it into the note page and it does not give you the timestamp. Either way, this is an easy way to capture information into OneNote. OneNote Web Clipper is similar to screen clipping in that you can clip information, but rather than being able to clip anything that's showing on your screen, you can only clip things that are on a web page. To use it, you'll have to install an extension for your web browser. It's available for most web browsers like Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. So here I'm on a Chrome browser and you can see the extension installed and I'm on a Wikipedia page. So let's click on the extension and let's say I want to clip the full page. So when I click on it, it's going to take a few seconds for the page to load. And then I have the option to choose which location within the notebook I want to clip this article into. So I'm just going to leave it on the default location and hit clip. And this is going to take a few seconds for the page to show up on the desktop version of my OneNote and you can see it load up and it seems to have maintained the structure of the web page. So everything looks good. So that's one option. And the other option is if I were to click on the extension again, and this time let's do region, I get to similar to the screen clipping, I get to drag a section of the web page that I want to copy into. And again, I'm going to leave it on the default setting clip, and then it will take a couple of seconds and it'll show up as an untitled page. And what's nice here again is it gives me the link to the actual web page. Let's go back to the extension. This time let's choose article. In this case, it's going to strip out most of the formatting. So it's just showing the thumbnail images and the text only. So let's try that. Give it a few seconds. 
And here we go. And then lastly, just the bookmark. So if you don't want to bring in all of the details, but you want to just bookmark this page, we can add a note if you want to, but I'm just going to leave it as is and hit clip. And again, we'll wait a few seconds and it shows up here. So this is another handy way to bring in information into your OneNote notebook. When I'm doing research, I tend to use the web clipper a lot. Of course, with OneNote being part of Microsoft 365, it has integrated features across other M365 products, most notably with Outlook. When you have your email message open in Outlook and you want to send it to OneNote, there is a command for that. It's in the message tab. And if you go over to move, you can hit send to OneNote and you get to choose which section of the notebook you want to send this message into. I'm just going to click on the current section, hit OK. And it just takes a split second and it brings the email message over into OneNote. When you first install OneNote desktop in Windows, it automatically installs a virtual print driver. This means you can print to OneNote from any application. So for example, I have a PowerPoint document open on my screen. I'm going to go to File, Print. And from my actual physical printer, I'm going to change it to OneNote desktop. And I'm going to hit Print. It'll ask me where I want to print the document to. I'm going to leave it on the current section. Hit OK. Let me enlarge this. And you can see all of the pages from the PowerPoint document has been printed into OneNote. We can also insert printout of document from any application directly into OneNote. And how we do that is by going into Insert, File Printout, selecting your document. I'm going to choose a random one, hit Insert. And it inserts the printout of that document along with a copy of the original file. This is not linking back to where the file lives, but it actually brought over a copy of the document. And if I were to double click on it, it'll open the document in its native application. So I'm going to close this out. And another way to do this, let me create a blank page, is to actually drag and drop the file directly from your file explorer. So I'm just going to drag it into my blank note page. It'll give me an option to either attach file or insert printout. I generally like to do insert printout because then it also attaches the file anyway. So let's try that. Um, so you can see the image embedded into the note page and it inserts a file. If I were to have chosen the insert attachment option only, then you won't see the embedded image. It'll just bring in the file attachment. If you're feeling kind of lazy or you're a slow typer, or if your hands are tied up, we do have the option to dictate notes directly into OneNote. And how we do that is by going to the Home tab and choosing the Dictate option. So let's try, try that now. I'm doing a little brain dump right now. I want to get everything that I'm thinking about right now onto this note page. And I will use AI later to help organize my thoughts. OK, so you can see that did a pretty good job. I really tried to be articulate uh, in my dictation so that the tool properly recognizes all the words. And you can see with the proper pauses, it did insert the right punctuation. If you simply want to record your audio rather than having it transcribed onto a page, we can use the audio record feature. So let's click onto a page, go to transcribe, and choose record audio. Now this is going to start recording my voice. And this is useful in a meeting because I can record audio and at the same time take notes. So I am taking notes at this point in the meeting. And what this will do is match up or sync up the audio recording to the notes that I'm taking. So if I was in a meeting that's lasting a full hour and I take a bunch of notes, at any point I can click into the section of my notes and it'll play the audio at that time. 
I have a whole video about this. This is beyond the scope of this video today, but I will link the video where I talk about this feature in full. So please be sure to check that out if you're interested. Of course, I can use the mobile OneNote app on iOS or Android device to capture information like from a whiteboard slide or anything that's visual. So for this example, I have a book and a page I wanna capture from it. So what I'll do is navigate to my OneNote app and I'm gonna hit the plus sign and I'll go to the body of the note page, hit the camera icon. And in this case, I wanna take a picture so I'll just frame my shot, take a photo, and I can crop it, I can rotate it. For now, I'm just gonna hit finish, and I'll title my note page. And I've got this set, so by default, anything that I save on my iPhone will go straight to my inbox section of my notebook. So I will go back, and let's go to the desktop so we can make further edits. We're back now on the desktop app and you can see the picture from the book carried in over and I was wrong. It actually captured into quick notes and not my inbox, but you get the idea. Now you can take additional notes next to the image and you can even right mouse click and choose copy text from picture and paste it in. It's not gonna be perfect because we captured additional text. It's bleeding off to the side. So you can crop this image a little bit to get a, a more accurate transcription, but you get the idea. You can of course use the share feature on your mobile device to share information directly into OneNote. So again, I'm using an iOS device, but you can do this on Android and whether it's a web page or a Yelp application or even YouTube, there's often a share button that you can use to put information directly into OneNote. So here I'm on a web page. It's how to geek. Um, I'm just going to click on the share button and I'm going to navigate to OneNote, click on it. And it asks you for the location. So I'm going to choose my inbox and hit send. And that's going to take a couple of seconds. Now, if I navigate to my desktop, go to my inbox, let me actually sync this notebook. And you can see the information come through. So those were all the different ways you can capture information into OneNote. I hope you found at least one or two tips that you weren't already familiar with. And if you are interested in learning more about OneNote, check out this video next. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Bye for now.